In this video, we're going to go to a property together that I'm looking to do an Airbnb or slash travel nurse short term rental deal. A gentleman reached out to us. He owns a piece of real estate in a challenging neighborhood. He was thinking about doing a traditional rental, but when I met with him, I'm like, you know what? You can make a lot more money doing short term rentals. So let's go take a look at the house and see what we can put together. Okay class, it's Chris Haskins with TheRealEstateRoundup.com. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. So today we're going to a property, we're gonna walk through it to see if I'm interested in doing a partnership or a joint venture with this gentleman on a short term rental deal. Babe, go ahead and give him a little pan of the street here. We're pulling up to the property. You can see this is not the best looking neighborhood. It's okay. The street is narrow, but we do have pride of ownership. People are taking care of their properties over there. You see the siding's good, windows good, roofs are good. The properties are kind of close together here. It's okay. Um, it's not necessarily super desirable regarding a traditional tenant. But what I love about short-term rentals is they're in and out. They don't care about the neighborhood. They don't. Well, they don't even know. They don't even know about the neighborhood, right? So, what happens is with short-term rentals you can still uh, get the, the tenants to come live in the property and they're gone before they, before they have any, whether they like the property or not, they're already gone. It's not like a regular tenant where they have to be in the house, oh, I love it, they're going, I'm gonna be here for years and years to, to years and years to come. Short-term rentals, they're in and out, all right? So let's get in here and meet my guy and see if we can put this deal together. Okay, so you saw a little bit of the neighborhood as we drove in. I want to make sure I thank my beautiful wife for working with me today, Princess. Thank you for being camera lady. You're welcome. So let's go ahead and give them a pan of the neighborhood so they can take a look at what this property has to offer. And it's so ironic, I want you to know, Roundup, that I actually started my real estate career right here back in 2004. I almost I attempted to tear all that land down back there and build some houses. Uh, we did one around the corner, but I wasn't able to put it together. And I'm so glad I ended up wholesaling that land and just getting out of it. All right. So that's where your boy started right on that land, <laughs> right off Shell Road in Hampton. So this street here, we have pride of ownership. People have keep, keep keeping their grass cut. You can go ahead and pan it around, babe. We got a nice house here, grass cut, but the street is a little narrow, which is not bad. So we're here. We want to talk to my friend. Marseille, he wants to talk about possibly doing a joint venture, doing travel nurse, Airbnb, short-term rentals, or he was thinking about doing a lease option. So I want to talk about all that stuff with him to see where his head is and what type of value I can personally bring to the table. It's all about, as you move forward with your real estate career, strategic alliances, strategic alliances, something I bring to the table, somebody else brings something to the table and we can come together and make money and bring value to the community. So let's lock on the door and talk to Marseille about what he's thinking about putting this deal together here. Nice looking property. I don't even know how many bedrooms it is. Marseille, you here? Yeah. Come on out, homie. What's up, brother? Marcy, your last name, Winder? Winder. Winder. Yeah, Winder. Good Winder. to see you, man. You friend. too, my man. Good to see you. Good to have you. Good, yeah. to, have you. good, good to be here. Yep. So give us a backstory about you and yep. why we got this house. Tell me about it. Absolutely. So my name is Marcy. Um, I go by the property pastor. I'm actually a pastor here in Hampton, Virginia. And um, I've been investing in real estate about four years now, I think. Sweet. So I got, uh, let's see, this is property number 12, I good believe it is. Lord. So For hold. For hold. For hold. Yeah, property number 12 for hold. So I bought this house, actually, I bought it kind of as a package deal. I bought another house about, about two blocks away, and I was going to flip both of the houses, right? So I looked at it, kind of ran the numbers. The other house I think I bought for 75 grand, put about 15 in it. This house I bought for 85, we put about 25 into it. Mm -hmm. And just kind of looking at, okay, does it make sense to flip it? Mm -hmm. Do I want to put a tenant buyer in there? That's something that you taught me, right, yep. through our mentorship. Yep. Do I want to put a tenant buyer in there? And then one of our recent meetups, we really kind of looked at it like, should I do a short-term rental? Mm -hmm. So that was something that really kind of piqued my interest. I have been looking at short-term rentals um, over the past probably six months, and I'm actually just put an offer on, on one down in Georgia okay. for a vacation home. Sweet. But then when you and I were talking, you're like, well, you know you can do it right here in your backyard.
So that's kind of why we're here now. We're going to kind of take a look at the house, yes. kind of check the neighborhood out, see if it's feasible. Okay. Um, one of the other things, you know, is about get, getting the partnerships, you know, doing deals together. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big who, not how type of guy. So, right. you know, I looked at you, you got a lot of experience in it. So I'm like, hey, let's leverage that. You know, let's, let's work together on it and kind of see. So I want to look at the house today and see if it's a good candidate. Thank you, Marcy, for at. thinking about me on this. Absolutely. Strategic alliances. Uh, he brings something to the table. Here's the thing, and we, I gotta give a 30 second teaching moment. Don't come to somebody if you don't bring nothing to the table. Don't ask somebody else to bring everything and you're just gonna be a solid partner and get all the money. Marseille, no doubt you've already had people approach you to, to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so yeah, bring, you gotta add value. If you don't add have value, value, if you don't add value to, this, to the equation, it's not yeah, personal. You, you're it's just using, yeah, at that point. At the, at, at, we bring value to each other, it's like leverage, it's horsepower. You know, with the two of us come together, we can do more than double the work. We do four or five times the work. I love it. Just keep that in mind, Roundup, when you're out there, because a lot of new investors are like, I want to get started. I want to partner with this guy. Why would a millionaire partner with somebody that's only bringing a property to the, to the table and they don't do, want to do any management, don't want to put up no money, but you want to get half the money up front? Ain't going to work like that, okay? So, like he said, what value can you bring to the relationship? All right, how many bedrooms and baths we got right here, Marseille? So this is a three bed, one bath house. Um, I call it a tiny house, it's not that big. It's only about a thousand square feet. Okay. Um, but we put a lot of upgrades into it. You know, the kitchen is, you know, it's top notch kitchen, you know, got granite countertops in it, new cabinetry, Sweet. stainless steel appliances, new flooring throughout. So, and we also put a new brand new HVAC system in it. And your, how much are you in it for now and what is your monthly payment? So right now I'm in it all in for about 125. Okay. Um, Actually, no, 110. I'm sorry, 110. Because we, mm -hmm. we bought an 85 and we put about 25 into it. Gotcha. So um, my monthly payment right now, I'm actually in the process of refinancing. Okay. So I'm going to put a note on it, which I can get 70% out of it Sweet. without a tenant in there. My monthly payment probably is going to come out maybe about seven. seven Sweet. That's taxes month. and insurance that's, too? No, no no taxes and insurance. So that's just, that's just pit, yeah, principal months. interest. Exactly. Right. Yep, so one, on a traditional conventional rental, which is something that I hate, mm -hmm. I very rarely do. Yep. What would that bring in on a 3-1 in this neighborhood? In this neighborhood, so usually around here, I'm probably going to see about a dollar per square foot, maybe a little bit more. Rents have gone up a little bit. So realistically, I would probably price this house at about $1,100. That's now. How about now. 2018? 2018, 950 to 1000 oh, You hear that, y'all? Rents have really gone crazy yeah, rent, over here. Rents have definitely gone up for sure. That's, that's everywhere across the country. Yeah, across the board. Yeah, and it's a, it's a housing shortage. So folks that couldn't buy houses... They're going back to renting, and that has, you know, is, is definitely caused prices to go up. Not sure. only that, uh, with no, the lack of inventory. Exactly. There's nothing you know, for rent. Basic supply and demand. Folks yeah. cannot find it. I mean, anytime, all the folks, all the houses that we rent, you know, we have no problem renting them out Gone. because people, they, they need, they need housing. They need a place to stay. No doubt you sure. got multiple. I'm gonna just put this up. You got multiple tenants, applications on your rental properties. Oh yeah. Yep. Any anything that we put on the market now goes probably within a week. So we, we get we get the you know our pick of the litter when it comes down to it. So lease option, I know you said you kind of saw, saw us doing it on our side. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to kind of go that route regarding this, uh, regarding getting a down payment and just letting it letting it ride? Oh yeah, absolutely. That was so this this house had basically three extra strategies I looked at. First one was flip, uh, actually four when you think about it. Okay. First one was flip. Uh, second one was lease option tenant buyer. Mm -hmm. Either you know we, we hold a note or we do a true lease option. Yeah. Then on top of that, we looked at a traditional renter mm -hmm. and then the short term. Short term renter. Yep. Short term renter. So tons of extra strategies. I tell people that all the time. Don't go in with one extra strategy. Always have a whole lot of ways to get out of the deal. So, but yeah, for sure. Keep that in mind, y'all. Marcel, you preaching, man. Yeah. Probably but but in, in terms of, I think you were asking me about if I decided to go lease option route. Mm -hmm. So my other, I told you, I think I told you I bought this house with kind of a package yeah. so about maybe a mile away i got another house that i bought and kind of did the same thing mm -hmm. that house made more 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 sense with the money and i did a, a, a lease option on that house okay you got a down payment already? got a down payment in hand 10 grand in hand tenant moved in about two weeks ago so i know you're watching this video to kind of get an understanding of how we approach short-term rentals travel nurse airbnb and the like but being a savvy and effective real estate investor you have to have several exit strategies when you get into these properties, like Marseille is saying. So I wanted you to kind of have an understanding, a quick overview of what a lease option is. You hear us talking about lease options a lot, right? So a lease option is a dual strategy. You have a lease 
and the option. There's two moves all wrapped up into one because we're looking for a tenant buyer. Somebody is, the, somebody is going to lease the property with an option to buy it. So lease gives them the right to occupancy. And occupancy just means that they can come and go as, as they please, unobstructable. Nobody can come in front of them. You see, when you own a property, that doesn't necessarily mean you have occupancy. I, hold a, I own a whole bunch of real estate, but that doesn't mean that I can come and go inside the property as I please, right? There's only one house that I can come and go as I please. And that's the one I live in, right? I've traded this right away in return in exchange for money. So the tenant pays money for the quiet enjoyment so they can come and go as they please. I can't stop them. And then the option gives them the right to buy the property, right? It's how the property is disposed of. We call it the disposition in real estate. So you can have the right of occupancy and the right to buy. Hence the term lease option two strategies wrapped up into one. And listen, I got a video for you right there if you wanna know more details on how lease options are broken down because you have to understand all the tools uh, that all the tools that real estate investors use to have longevity in the business. So look, if we're pouring into you, make sure you take a second to go down below, hit that subscribe button, it's right down there in the bell so you're notified every time we do one of our trainings. I don't want you to miss anything. And there's some links in the video description. You can join our email list. I'm working on uh, real estate investing foundations. If you're starting out, we're gonna go all go over all the exit strategies, lease option, owner financing, negotiating, contract for deed, all that stuff, okay? So get signed up to our email list below as well. There's a bunch of links. Some of those links, uh, they pay us a referral fee, which you don't pay anything extra, but those are a lot of different products and services that are gonna help boost your real estate investing career. And just a friendly reminder, you know, we do buy real estate in all type of houses and land in the Tidewater area of Virginia. It's called the Hampton Roads area. If you have a house you wanna liquidate, you wanna get cash, you've inherited a property, or you just have a don't want a house that you don't want, we uh, can close as, in as fast as seven to 10 business days. We also do structured deals where we joint venture or do a partnership with homeowners. So shoot us an email. That's going to be chris at chrishaskins.com if you're interested in selling a property. And we've also opened up our business to private investors as private lenders. If you have some capital not getting you a high rate of return, we can use that partner with you to secure your capital and give you a high rate of return based on the real estate. Whether we do a fix and flip or a long-term hold, it will be depending on the deal. So reach out to us if you're interested in becoming one of our private lenders. Marseille. Got it. Was that your first lease option? Nope. You so know, I got, I got another sandwich lease option. You um, bought on a lease option. Yeah, basically, exactly. Lease option. Yep. The other one, it was a sandwich lease option. I did that earlier in 2021. Um, this one that I just did is actually, I'm doing a wrap. Okay. So I'm basically the, the bank on that house. Be the that bank. would be my second one. Be Absolutely. Anytime you can be the bank, be the bank. That's you right. Know, the, the bank has figured a whole lot of stuff out. So we got to get in on that too. Is we, we, get, we can get into that. So your lease option deals, I want to get inside and walk through this yeah. thing. What can you give my roundup homies mm -hmm. regarding what do you prefer? Traditional versus lease option? Where you at with that? I prefer a lease option um, or a wrap. And the reason, several reasons for that. Number one, no landlord. <laughs> Number two, no landlord. Number three, no landlord. <laughs> no, seriously, with it, right, there's no, I don't have any maintenance. You know, I don't have to have a property manager. All of my buying and hold stuff, I got property managers. I don't want to get calls at three o'clock in the morning. Like I said, I'm a pastor. My, t my, my parishioners you can call me. You got enough of those. Yeah, they can call me at two or three. <laughs> but I can't, I can't have my, my tenants call me at two or three, right? But gotcha. when it comes to the lease option, you know, that person takes better care of the house, right? They, they, they get that down different payment mindset. up front. They got a whole different mindset. All those properties that I have, they take care of the problems, Sweet. you know, so right. which is nice. I really like them. And it's a whole lot more cash flow involved in it. And that's, right. that's the name of the game. It's a numbers game, for sure. I've been, beg I've been, I've been begging my roundup homies, Marseille, to just at least consider them, they won't do it. Really? They want to they wanna be warm and fuzzy, new this, new that, new mm -hmm. carpet paint, all they want to be, mm -hmm. have a nice feel good when they walk into the property. Right. 
oh lord maybe they'll listen to you but honestly you get you get a tenant buyer they are usually willing to make those upgrades to the house and the thing about it is if they don't convert and they've upgraded your house guess what you got free upgrades you get to go around and do that same thing again go find another tenant buyer collect another down payment Good rinse again. and repeat all right so let's walk through this and see what you did for your upgrades Ryan. all right cool. cool let's take a look all right come on in baby we got a hold of the my wife is freezing out here do 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 all right, so this, oh, you ain't even started yet, okay. She <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm, about to, I'm about to jump into it. You can't hit it, yep. No, she, I don't think she has started yet. She rolling. Oh, it's okay. It's all alive, bro. All right, cool. So this is this is actually the inside of the house. This is kind of the living room slash dining room area. Like I mentioned, it's not a big house, um, but it's, you know, we put some nice stuff in here. Obviously, I like it. ceiling fans up here, fresh coat of paint everywhere, new doors. What kind of flooring is this, uh, Marcy? Luxury vinyl plank flooring all the way through. So that's waterproof. 30-year, uh, you know, lifetime guarantee type stuff. So spills, all that kind of stuff you don't really have to worry about. So, you know, nice, from, from that standpoint, nice. from a maintenance side of things, nothing. Nothing she got, got to really worry about. I love so, Marseille. Sweep it and go. Sweep it and mop it. You got the flooring, babe? Yes. Yep. Let's take a look in here, brother Marseille. Looks like you put some money in here, yeah, bro. Yeah, this is, this is where the money is. They, they, they say the, the kitchen sells the house. You can stay right there, babe. Get them paying from there. All right, so this is actually the kitchen, um, and you can see, right, we have got Good Lord. granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, cabinetry, uh, yeah, you got double you have, refrigerator. You haven't even used this stuff. None of this stuff's been used. It's, it's you know, it's moving ready, you know, and uh, wow. one of the reasons that I really put more money into this was because the house was so small. I wanted to make sure that whoever saw it fell in love with it, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things I... One of the things I actually learned with my other there. project around the corner was that we just kind of painted in, you know, cosmetic, pure cosmetic. Rental rehab. Yeah, it was like, it was almost like a rental rehab. And when I put that one on the market, it's, it was harder to move. It gets you in trouble, Exactly. Man. You so know what's really, weird? People's eyes, buyers' eyes yep. are changing mm -hmm. with TV and the internet. Right. So before we could do that back, back mm -hmm. in 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 10, right. no internet. Yeah challenging to do that tell me it's about hard that. to do it so yeah in that whole experience i was i kind of looked at it like hey you know this is a this is a seller's market it's low inventory <laughs> somebody just wants to be a home buyer right well there are limits to everything you so with, with that particular house you know that was one of the things that i learned i finished that one before i did this one okay so we did we jumped over to this project it was like okay let's put a little bit more into this one good for you you know and when we did that like i said everybody i have had some tenant buyers come and look at this house and they love the they house, love it, yeah. you know, so, but I decided to pause because I want to kind of evaluate all of my options cool. and figure out what's going to give me the best bang for my buck. Gotcha. With, with my okay, investment. let's do it. So. What else we got? All right, so that's the kitchen. We'll work our way to the bedroom. Looks here too, babe. Looks like you might as well give him a pan over there too, maybe. You got luxury vinyl plank. Let me give you a tip, Roundup, and I want, let me ask him. Why did you do luxury vinyl plank all the way through Marseille? I like consistency. Um, you know, for me, I didn't want to put tile in this house. It's mm -hmm. a slab house. Um, for my bang on my buck and my ease, the, the, the plank was just better for me to go that route. What, go ahead. No, what I mean, we found it, out, round up, what we found out is if you do one flooring all the way through, it actually makes small houses feel a lot feel bigger. bigger. Yep. When you put that floor tile on here, it's something about the eye when yep. you see it, it change. It. makes you feel like you come into a box into the kitchen. So the way he's done this, your eye will go all the way through when you're looking through. You won't even notice <clears throat> when you walk into a different room. That's right. Who right. we got here, by the way? You want to give my man a shout? He kind of... Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, so this is my man, Miguel. Miguel, say hello to the, to the Roundup family. What's up, Roundup family? Yeah, M M yeah, Miguel is somebody that I've been working with. You know, he knows Chris, he knows me. We've been working together, just teaching him about real estate. Sweet. He's done his first deal, right? Yeah, yeah he got his yeah. first deal under his belt. Doing so house hack. Yeah, doing a house hack. And this, this thing is all about giving back. You know, and that's why we that's do right. this, you know, network with people, find people that's already done it. I believe that success leaves clues. That's one of the reasons that we try to link up all the time. But yeah, he's hanging out today, Absolutely. trying to soak it all up too. How yes. old are you? I'm actually 24. 20. Yes, sir. 24 years oh. old. Man, if you start investing when you're 24 years old, you'd be a millionaire quick. I'm 40. Yeah, I mean, you'd be done. Easy, <laughs> Easy money. I, you know, I'm just saying you can do it faster than that, but. Absolutely. Good for you. You want to give us a quick thing about uh, what you're doing now? Or? Uh, I'm currently doing a house hack. I bought a house in Norfolk. Um, and for, actually, uh, for Roundup homies that don't know what a house hack is, what is that? So it's pretty much where you uh, have like a duplex, multifamily property, and your tenants 
uh, that second unit or third, whatever unit, however many units you got, pays pretty much your mortgage. Gotcha. Um, or will help you pay your mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, so I pretty much had a, a detached garage and I turned it into a, a, a living bedroom. Dwelling? Yep, a one bedroom apartment and uh, it pays my mortgage. That is so And sweet. then some, so. <laughs> Yeah. That's so cool. Yes, sir. I actually started like that, Miguel. I'm gonna tell you, uh, when I met my wife years ago, we were just dating. She was like, "This house hacking ain't gonna work." Yeah, no. yeah it's getting old. It's getting old. We're trying to get the next deal so we can get on out of there. Remember it's that getting day? Old. But you got him in the garage, and, though. And oh, just, yeah, he got him in the, out, of, out of the garage. It's a detached garage. Detached so garage. Okay. But then to make it better, I actually spent I actually. Spent no money getting the, the house. I got a VA loan. Okay. So I oh, better. Okay. And then I, there was some money left over at closing, and they paid me and paid some towards my car payment. So, yeah. yeah. Congratulations, brother. Yes, sir. 24 years old, y'all. Get your butt out there. Doing it. Let's do it. All right, so we'll make our way through. This is, like I said, it's three bedrooms. So they're, they're not huge bedrooms, but... You can just um, keep in the bedroom with them. Baby. We, we did go ahead and put new carpet in these rooms. They got a fresh coat of paint in them. So not a whole lot, just lighting um, and some, some ceiling registers, too. I did mention that we added central heating in there. So didn't have that when we, when we purchased the property. What was it, one of those wall units for heat? It just, yeah, baseboard heat. Mm -hmm. Baseboard heat and window units, basically. And um, here's the middle, middle bedroom. This is the tiny room. So this is one of those ones where it's going to be like a twin bed, or if we do a short-term rental, we might turn it into like a little office or something to that effect. Man, shoot. We'll throw a bed in there, bro. We'd be happy to have a bed. And then this one back here is the third bedroom. So the, the outside bedrooms are the two bigger ones. They're the larger rooms, but like I said, all of them kind of got the same scope of work. Carpet, lighting, HVAC registers, and, uh, and fresh coat of paint. How to get in that Did one. you do anything in there, Marseille? What bathroom? Good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so as far as the bathroom goes, we were able to keep the tub and the surround that were in good shape. Did you glaze it? No. It's it just clean, a, it, you, you cleaned that up. Yeah, just cleaned it up. Wow. Yeah, so bath bathroom's intact. Um new ceiling, I mean new uh, exhaust fan, new toilet, vanity, mirror, and hardware. Sweet. So just cosmetic stuff primarily in here for the most part. So this is 25 grand? Yep. Yeah, and a lot of that work was really in the HVAC system. I mean, we probably had six, seven grand in just the HVAC alone. Was it brand new? Yeah. They were not, bro. They used to be four grand. Yeah. I remember we paying three grand. Yeah, no, nah, we got an outside unit air handler up in the attic, you know, and then all the register work. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, my contractor, he, he did all of it turnkey. So. You got to get it done. Yeah, but... But yeah, that's that's the house. Okay. And uh, like I said, we kind of taking a look, trying to see if it's a good fit. Yeah. You know, and um, like I mentioned, I'm getting into short term rentals in a few other markets, so I want to figure right. out, okay, does it make sense to do travel nurses? Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to do a true traditional Airbnb? Gotcha. You know, kind of here in Hampton. You know, so I've been doing a little bit of research, kind of reaching out to people. Yep. And really, at this point, it's about you know what makes the most sense for the numbers, gotcha. for the neighborhood, okay. and whatnot like cool. that. So right. really, that's, that's kind of where it is. So in your mind, were you thinking about? Hands off. I know you said earlier, we want me. To, oh, I'm not saying you're not. We're not committed to anything right now. We're mm -hmm. just doing. Yeah, we just we just talk, yeah, the dialogue for sure. You want me to give you a flat fee every month and me run everything? Mm -hmm. Is that where we? Where you say, hey, we look fifteen hundred, whatever that number is, right? Whatever the number. Because you're gonna get way more mm -hmm. for short terms and right traditional. Absolutely. So uh, is that what you kind of thinking? Yeah. So part of me is like, I mean, one, on one hand, I was like, man, do I just want to take on the whole thing by myself? Right. Go in here and, and you wait way yeah, more than yeah, exactly. But then the other part is like, OK, does it make sense to do a trial run? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who's already done it, do it for a year, six months, whatever that is. And maybe that's what I might look at. You know, so really I'm kind of saying flat fee, maybe for a certain portion. Right. Somebody that's who's true. already walked that walk. And then at the end of it, we figure out the terms that make sense. And then I just keep on rolling. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like that. It's really about how do you leverage somebody else's experience where they, everybody creates a win-win. You that know what I'm saying? True. So okay. what I don't want to really do is just be totally hands-off because then if I'm, I'm not learning anything then. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think from my perspective, it's like if we jump into it, learn, learn through it, right? Get your hands on it, right? Because there's two ways to learn, right? I think at the end of the day, you can just learn on your own, go do it, fail, make mistakes, which is important. You got to do that too. Or you can kind of say, all right, there is somebody who's made those mistakes already. I could benefit from that. We can both benefit together. So I'm kind of looking at maybe it makes sense to do something like that. Okay. So maybe a short-term contract. Let's just say a year. Maybe right. we came in managed it for a year. 
Then we could revisit it at that time. Exactly. That, that, that might be the way I want to go. Only question mark with that is we have to pay for the staging. Right, all the staging pieces. So we have to consider that regarding mm -hmm. whether you want us to pick right. that up or yeah. is that, well, are I you flexible back. with that? Yeah, I'm absolutely. So I think because at the end of the day, right, it's all about return on investment. You know, yeah. so if, if you go in and you put 10 grand in the stage, yeah. right, and you're making tons of money, that's still got to pay for that furniture. Yeah, it's and then when you back. leave, it's like, okay, well, dog, I just spent all that money for what? So yeah, you're right. we, we can look at it like either we split costs or I buy you manage or when it's all done, if we make, it's kind of like a, a touch point, you know, a checkpoint after a year when that exit strategy is like, well, maybe I buy the furniture back. You know that's what I'm saying? That's a good point. And that's the wonderful part, y'all, about partnerships is because you, you figure out terms that work for everybody. You that's know what I'm saying? Point. You create win-wins. And that's one of the things I love about working with people, having mentors, having partners is because the pie is infinite. You know, that's one of the things I learned about creative financing is like, hey, it's not like the pie is only that big. You know, you can go in and you can stretch the pie out. You, you know, and that's, that's one of the cool things I, that, I, that I like about, you know, doing that. Okay. For sure. I think I'm down with that one. Let me real crush my numbers. So obviously, it's going to take a little time. We can't yeah. come to something immediately. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I, I think I like that because if you do a lease option, I, I would kind of be out of it. But Right. I mean, I would hate for you to lease option it out and somebody tear it up, you know, but you mm -hmm. do get a down payment. Right. But if you held on to it, you're going to make more money, man, on mm -hmm. short-term rentals. Yeah, short-term rentals. Like I said, I want to get into that market. I know I'm getting into that market elsewhere. I was like, well, shoot, I might as well get into it in my backyard, too. The tricky part becomes, because I'm a pastor and because I work a W-2 job still, the getting back in and out of here to mm -hmm. get all the, you know, uh, furniture companies coming, cable companies coming. All those pieces you got yeah, to get, decor all, all in there, yeah, stage yeah, yeah. right. We can handle that. Those are hard to get set up. It just, it just creates more and more holding time. So let me tell you why I actually am interested in doing this deal. I am going to be focusing over the next few months and this year on building a short-term rental empire, right? So I have my lease options and my long-term holds already, but I'm partnering up with a guy who does travel nurses and a bunch of Airbnbs. So what I can do is team up with him, plug into his system, and do what we call short-term rental arbitrage where we don't even have to own the property. So Marseille owns this house, we can come in, bring the tenant, and we can decide whether we're gonna stage it, he's gonna stage it, I'm gonna pay for it, or we do a, uh, uh, some type of a hybrid of that. I bring some money and he brings some money. But I don't even need to own the property. So if there's a major repair, Marseille will have to deal with that, right? So we manage all the coming and going and the turning of the property, linens, wash and dry, keep the place clean, and I don't have to go out there and put up any financing. So that's, the, that's my interest in this deal. And becoming the team player, I want to get my reps up and exercising, figuring out how to do collective financing. That's not just working all the deals on my own. I want to partner up with different people and get more strategic alliances as I get older. What I've learned is you can make far more money with a group of people, right? And it's a skill. It's a skill set. Get your reps up. So Marseille works a full-time job. I can step in be his eyes and ears and boots on the ground, set it all up while he still works and he gets his flat rate of return or flat fee every month or however we figure this deal out. You know, and I was thinking as I'm driving over here, Shell Road is there, no, no disrespect to Shell Road. Mm -hmm. I have a house literally two blocks down right. the street. Yep. It attracts a certain tenant for me, for my mm -hmm. experience. The good thing with short-term rentals is they don't give a hill of beans about the area. They have no idea right. whether the area is good, bad or indifferent. They're in. The in and out. Short amount of time right. and gone. Yep. And it's and that's honestly, you mentioned Shell Road. That was one of the reasons why I thought when you mentioned, I was like, no way. There's no way a short term rental could work here. But then you talk to somebody who's I already told done you about, it. That one you told me about one down the road. It's like, dude, I got yeah. So people it was just shot mind, yep, it just opens your mind. So that, and I think for your viewers to make sure they understand that, keep network and keep talking to people because there's somebody else who has more experience than you. You know, so for me, I only thought I had one or two options. Mm -hmm. And then we sat down, had a cup of coffee, and it expanded the horizon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No so doubt. I think no that's doubt. critical. I think okay. that's key. Well, sweet. Anything else you want to drop from around, with homies? No. I'm good. I, absolutely. Hey, thanks for having me. You know, thanks for coming out to check out, you know, check out the house. I look forward to working together. I appreciate everything you've done for me and my business over these past four years and inspired me, you know, to, to help other people too. You know what Thank I'm saying? You. So I think we should always pay it forward. Yep. You know, God has given us knowledge. He's given us resources and we are blessed to be a blessing. So I appreciate you right. being a blessing in my life 
And we, I just want to be a blessing to other people. So Thank you, appreciate Marcy. that, man. Absolutely. If somebody wants to get in touch with you and just kind of get to know you a little bit better, do business with you, how do they reach you? Instagram? Yep. Or? So you, you can find me on Instagram. Um, I go by the property pastor. So it's all one word, just the property pastor. You can search for me there. I am on YouTube as well. You can search the property pastor there. I've actually had Chris on the interviews with him. Um, check me out on, on YouTube. Check me out on Instagram. I am trying to build my follower base as well, trying to help other people to, uh, I, I, we go by Kingdom Legacy Builders, where our mission is to help everyday people to build a lasting legacy for their children and their children's children using generational wealth principles in real estate. So check me out there. Like I said, YouTube, Instagram, you can find me on Facebook as well on all of those platforms. So yeah, you, you can definitely find me on any of those places. Marcy, what if you build it all up and the children tear it all up to hell? Well, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> I, it means I, did, I, did, I did something wrong, you know. But it's funny because you say that. This is the truth. At the end of the day, we had to set them up, but we can't just give it to them. So yeah. I think they got to work for it. And I think it's, I'm trying to remember, it's the thing I heard the other day. It was like, what was it? It said that. Uh, tough times make strong, strong generals, strong generals and, and but then it talks about strong generals make easy times and easy, easy times, times make, make weak, weak yep. and then weak people make tough times. So it's like, it's rough, yo, though. if we make it so easy for our kids, it's rough. They're gonna just they're gonna destroy it, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, my my dad got me into real estate, you know, years ago, kind of planted those seeds. Okay, but he just give me stuff. He made me work for it. So I think that's mm. a key. Is we can't just take our kids to Disney World every year. We can't give them everything. You hear that, man? We, you we gotta make work. The hook. I don't gotta go to Disney. <laughs> hey, look, I owe my kids a trip to Disney because COVID tore our Disney trip up. So I, I'm still on the hook. So I, and I, I can't, can't get out of it. All right. Can't get out of it. Appreciate Thank you, you brother. Love you, man. Love you too. God bless y'all. Thanks. Okay, so stay tuned to the channel. I will document what we're going to do. I'm not quite sure how we're gonna put this together with Marseille Lease Option. Uh, travel nurse, Airbnb, long-term rental, short-term. I'm really not sure, but I promise you I will document it so you can actually learn how we're doing it. You can get out there and implement it yourself without even having to own the real estate. All right. So I will see you on the next video. Peace.